the most important one of the most important things you can see when you deal in this topic with these people, you're not going to be doing any intellectual slumming, right? <laughs> no, no, no. This is top drawer. This crowd right here, not just fighters. I mean, understand the problem or not or are not afraid of talking to you about it. We have to face a very unpleasant fact. People that have benefited most from the fetish of the post-war international rules-based order, the ones that have benefited the most, the elites in our country for the first time in American history, in fact, the only time in American history, have betrayed this country. They're traitors. Every one of the 400 that were in San Francisco, and what we say yesterday, not one standing ovation, but two standing ovations to the murderous dictatorship of Xi and that gang of criminals in Beijing, the elites in our country. How did the post-war international rules-based order not just screwed the world, but screwed the American working man and woman? Twice, twice we betrayed our number one allies in the greatest conflict in, in human history, the Second World War. In the last years of the conflict, we oversupplied, knowingly oversupplied Joseph Stalin. Oversupplied, and there was a big fight inside the government about doing this. Why did that happen? Because the State Department and the Roosevelt administration was infiltrated by Russian Soviet Bolsheviks. And we oversupplied them, why? So they take an iron grip, not just on the Russian people, who would lose 65 million Russians in World War II, but also Eastern Europe, and at the time, even Germany. At Yalta and Potsdam, think about it for a second. We had D-Day, and everybody's D-Day, D-Day, and it's great, heroic, unbelievable. The British, the Canadians, and the Americans. Then Patton comes and get, breaks us out of, out of the hedgerows to, the, to, to Paris, which I think we're in Paris at August 15th, then Market Garden, no matter how bad that was handled. We still got close to the Rhine, and we never went to Berlin, ever. Why? We were ordered to stop. Field Marshal Montgomery, ordered to stop. Patton, ordered to stop, to let the Red Army take Berlin. In China, after Lao Beijing loses 35 million people fighting the Imperial Japanese Army and really took the brunt of the best units, just like the Russians did with the Wehrmacht, took the best units and bled them out so that we didn't have more casualties in the Pacific as we came across. What did we do? In 1949, we gave the country to the communists. The communists who had gone out of their way not to fight the Imperial Japanese during the war, but to fight the Kuomintang. And these weren't unconscious decisions. These were conscious decisions that were made by our State Department, our Defense Department, General Marshall, and all the hierarchy. And you said to go, how can that happen? Because we sold out the people that actually fought with us and died with us. There's another brutal fact. NATO, 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 NATO. None of the elites of Europe, except for a brave handful, fought in World War II on our side. In Scandinavia, the elites sold us out. Ireland, my country, sold us out. Spain, Italy, all of it sold us out. Only a handful of people. Poland, a handful of people in Eastern Europe, the resistance fighters in France and other places who were mainly communist fought on our side and died on our side. The rest of it was performative. And now it's NATO, NATO, NATO. All this talk about how many, how many Russians were killing. Last time I looked, the American people are not at war with the Russian people. And 50 years later, in 1989, the Lao Beijing rise up, we have Deng Xiaoping and these guys pinned to the wall. And the moment the goddess of liberty 
The goddess of democracy is in Tiananmen Square. They drop the hammer. And what do we do? We back off and we send General Scowcroft to Bush 41, send Scowcroft and those to cut a deal to keep the Chinese Communist Party in power that we put in power 50 years before. You know why? We thought they'd be a more reliable business partner. Six months later, the Berlin Wall falls. And after total chaos and the essential stealing of assets from the Russian people by predators in the West, the KGB comes back. And so here we are today. And since, and since Tiananmen Square, the American people, the Chinese people, and the people of the world have been sold out, sold out by a combination of Wall Street, big corporate interest, Silicon Valley, Hollywood, you name them all. And where everybody else, oh, these people are terrible, these people are terrible. We are looking at a more murderous dictatorship than the Nazis at the top of their game. He's forced, the forced abortions alone was a 450 million forced abortions. 80% are little Chinese girls. I don't want to hear feminists talk about this crap. 450 million forced abortions. 80% are little Chinese girls. And think of the psychological damage on the mothers. Because when the CCP says you're going to abort, you're going to abort. This is a murderous dictatorship. And look at these folks today. People are banned. The books are not printed. The articles are not written. People want to look the other way. You know why they want to look the other way? They're making a lot of money. Uh, Henry Kissinger and Graham Allison, the Thucydides trap, you know, we're the declining power, they're the rising power. They ran this scam in the 70s. Gaffney and these guys know. When I was a young naval officer, you take the Naval War College course, it's the Peloponnesian War. I said, hey, I love history. Why am I taking this? Oh, it's Athens versus Sparta. This is Kissinger's theory. We're the declining power. They're the rising power. They, they got a stronger economy, a command economy, greater military. I go, What? I'm some Grundoon on a ship in the Pacific. I'm like, what? When President Reagan came to power, the first thing he did is have Bill Casey and the guys at the, at the CIA, hey, maybe we do another analysis of, of how, how can these Soviet, how can the Bolsheviks be a stronger economy than the United States? I understand we got the Arab oil embargo, stagflation, all of it. Volcker's going to help me clean that up. How do you do that? He did a study. Oops. <laughs> we made a mistake. Oops. Oh, it seems like 20 years ago we made some assumptions. We just extrapolated off it. Uh, those numbers are kind of wrong. Well, how wrong? Reagan asked. Oh, the economy's only like one-sixth as big as we thought. They weren't an ascended power. They were a decaying, rotting power. And remember, the Russian people hated them, just like in Eastern Europe. We talk about the captive nations. Remember, we used to all do the captive nations, right? The captain at Eastern Europe, the one captive nation we really never talked about is Russia. Russia. And today they're trying to do the same thing. They're trying to drive us into war. Look at all these guys on MSMC. Well, we're killing 10 Russians every Ukrainian. Well, first off, we've killed 500,000 Ukrainians. Let me say it differently. The elites in this country, from Stavridis to MSNBC to all these great thinkers at the Atlantic Council, all of them, have murdered in cold blood 500,000 Ukrainians. <laughs> Mersheimer told us exactly what was going to happen. The elites in the West, the party of Davos, the city of London, Wall Street, and the corrupt Biden regime, they're going to fight this war until the last Ukrainian dies. And right now, the mothers and fathers in Ukraine are sitting there and going, hey, hang on, you're not going to take my son. You're not going to take my son and take him to the Chernobyl house on the eastern front of the Russian-speaking territories in Ukraine and have him die in a frozen trench like it's 1914. That's not going to happen. That's not us saying that. That's the parents saying that. If we give $60 billion to this, we're just adding to the murder and slaughter of an entire generation of the Ukrainians. This is honored work and what you guys are doing here to pack this. We have one role and function to take down the greatest existential threat that has ever faced this country. And that's to take down the Chinese Communist Party. And we don't need to fire a shot 
In fact, right now, as these experts can tell you, if we start firing shots, you may have 10,000 dead American sailors at the bottom of the Straits of Taiwan in the South China Sea. So we have to be smart. You cut them off from capital, you cut them off from technology, and as Frank Gaffney says in the indictment, we out every traitor. They're not collaborationists, they're traitors. They betrayed the American people, they betrayed the United States of America, and most importantly, they betrayed Lao Beijing. They betrayed hardworking Chinese that have been our allies since Japan, since the mid-1930s. History's gonna look back, and guess what? These men and women and you are on the right side of history. And the collaborationists, and quite frankly, the Wall Street and Silicon Valley scum from Sequoia Capital to Goldman Sachs to the Treasury Department to the big corporations they are all in business with them, they will be looked at as the same people that financed Hitler and financed Stalin. I want to thank you folks, and thank you for your support. Next year, Beijing.